Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to all the new players who've started playing Warframe since Tenocon. For those looking for a super serial guide, only to find mine and then wonder what kind of clown fiesta they've walked in on. Sorry about that. <laughs> Now, I'm not one to say that I bandwagon on content, but let's face it. What with the fact that Tenocon dished out well over 300,000 Hydroid Primes, it's safe to say that there's a lot of people out there at the moment who are currently playing this fabulous boy and wanting to know how the hell he works beyond being a hentai nightmare. And also, there are 300,000 people who now have parents, loved ones, and significant others wondering if you now have a hentai fetish. So, whether you're one of the lucky ones who got Hydroid Prime from the Tenocon drops, or whether you've picked him up randomly and want to know more, or whether you just enjoy seeing my pretty face, I welcome you to a updated Hydroid Guide, wherein we are going to be taking a look at a beginner's guide, a beginner's analysis of how Hydroid works, his builds, augments, and everything you're ever going to need to know about how, making, how to make this uh, anime schoolgirl's worst nightmare function. Or in my case, my wet dream. What? <laughs> really, since we've made the previous guide, nothing has really changed about Hydroid other than the way I make my guides and the way I understand certain frames. So other than the fact that he now finally has a Prime trailer, which now means 90% of the Warframe Reddit population have nothing to meme about anymore, there's nothing really different. So if you've watched my previous video, chances are you already know most of how Hydroid works. But for those who don't, here's an updated analysis as to how he functions. Hydroid in of himself is a utility frame, one that ideally is used in conjunction with others and relies on somewhat on understanding the intricacies of his abilities to get the most out of him. Unlike a lot of frames where the resultant damage and effects of abilities are quite transparent, Hydroid is a bit of a mystery when we first pick him up. Yes, his form makes you think of the last anime you watched, and yes, if I color him yellow, I can use his undertow ability to satiate the water sports fetish I've always had, but the power from the abilities and effects aren't quite as apparent as you would like to hope from a frame you can pick up quite early in the game. Now, Hydroid's power is a bit of a dichotomy. It on one end of things, you have the idea that his power is very simple. There's only really two or three builds that actually function well for him. And for some of you, that might be a bit of a turnoff because there's not really much adjustability to how he plays. But what he does do is he's very he's very good at. And realistically speaking, because there's only two or three different ways of playing him, you kind of have a bit of simplicity in how you're going to mod him, which makes life a bit easier rather than maybe confusing you with an abundance of play styles and build types that might make you have a bit of a convoluted uh, motion of how you get used to playing him. Although it does show his his level of antiquatedness, because back in the day, this is kind of how frames were. They had a focus, and that's kind of where you'd put all your priority towards. And speaking of priority, Hydroid bases most of his playstyle around range and power strength, and then depending on which focus you're going to go for will depend on the ratio in which you put your priority into. Now, in terms of playstyles, we have one of two focuses to go for. The first focus is based on your range. Range is key to a utility-based Hydroid, and utilizing your range, you'll then be able to lock down areas, knock enemies down, and generally cause a nuisance for the movement of your enemy. Or we make more of a push to a well-rounded build with a focus on power strength, wherein we are able to self-sustain with ease, as well as blow enemies away with substantially more damage. And although you'll likely never see the kind of infinite damage some frames can attain, you can, however, pump out quite substantial ni nice amounts of damage with a well-rounded build, as well as then complementing some decent crowd control, some decent survivability, as well as getting some use out of abilities that you don't really get use of with a pure range build. And this then will help keep you a float in your content. You see what I did there? <laughs> now, let's see where the magic happens with his abilities. Starting with his passive, which if you thought I was joking earlier about the whole hentai-induced nature of Hydroid, this might prove my point. Hydroid's melee slams have a 50% chance to spawn a tentacle, which if my thing would actually proc, there we go. Each tentacle will have the same functionality of the tentacles you can spawn from your fourth ability. These will last for 15 seconds by default, and you can summon up to three of them. So, yeah, tentacles. Yeah, you're going to see a bit of a trend with Hydroid's abilities here. Lots of, lots of, lots and lots of tentacles. Mm. Now, moving on to the more impactful abilities. Hydroid's one is called Tempest Barrage. Tempest Barrage 
uh, basically turns Hydroid into a weatherman. Because whenever Hydroid casts this, he will then barrage an area of high impact rain that he summons down on its location in a 10 meter radius for five seconds. For each second it's active, four water missiles will land, dealing 150 impact damage and knocking down enemies within five meters of the explosive radius of the initial impact. Now, this is an ability that can be used in conjunction with your other CC abilities and complement a, support a supportive CC-focused playstyle. However, this can then be charged by holding the ability button to cause it to deal an additional 200% bonus damage at max charge, vicariously also increasing its duration, but at a sacrifice of costing twice as much energy. So either tap for quick, successive, cheap shots, or charge for a larger, longer winded, higher damaging knockdown that lasts for a longer period of time. Now it's important to note a couple quick things here. It's important to note that the base damage and therefore the charge damage as well are affected by power strength, meaning it can become quite punchy with the aforementioned power strength focus build we were talking about. The duration and therefore the amount of bolts fired is affected by duration, and the radius of the explosions is affected by power range. However, the casting and effect radius of where the bolts come down on is not affected by range, so that is going to be a limited area based on where you cast that. Now, the augment for this ability is called Corroding Barrage. This basically turns your one into an armor stripping beast, amplifying a supportive role, especially if you build for range, as it will now have a 100% chance to inflict corrosive damage. I wouldn't really say this is an augment I would use, unless I specifically knew I was going up against high armored enemies, and realistically, even at that point, you could just as easily take something like Corrosive Projection instead, or something the with, with other armor stripping necessities to it and save yourself losing a mod slot. But hey, it's a nice thing to do if you may be lacking in other corrosive areas. Tidal Surge is Hydroid's 2, and in the most simplistic fashion, this allows Hydroid to transport around the place really quickly. Essentially, upon activation, you turn into a tidal wave, crashing in the direction you're facing. The speed of which which is kind of crazy, is 30 meters per second and gets quicker when you build for duration, to a point where you are probably going to be quicker than even Gauss himself. Any enemies hit by the tidal wave are inflicted with 300 impact damage and pulled along with the wave as it travels, additionally then taking 300 slash damage as the wave breaks at the end of the cast or whenever deactivated or whenever hitting a wall. The damage you deal in this wave is affected by power strength, the striking radius is affected by range, and realistically I wouldn't say this is going to be used for damage, so to say, but instead can be your oh shit, I gotta go fast ability, which can then be complementary with the knockdown it comes with. Now normally I make a really convoluted extra little bit for the augment, but in the simplicity, in the most simplistic way possible, tidal impunity is the augment for this ability, and essentially what this does is when you pass through an, an ally or when you crash into an ally or whenever you cast it, it will cause allies and yourself to become immune to status effects for 12 seconds. A very simplistic, supportive augment that should be, well, one for personal preference if you feel like being more of a supportive type hydroid. Hydroids 3. Your 3 basically allows you to do your best impression of when you see your favorite anime waifu. Upon activation, you melt into a puddle of water with a 4 meter radius. In this wet and sticky mode, you are immune to damage, and in typical anime loving, as a typical anime loving fan, you want to spread that love of hot waifus to everyone who can hear, so any enemy that comes within range will be pulled into the puddle to share in the hot waifu delights that you are encouraging. Now it's interesting to note that once consumed, enemies are out of action and will suffer 25 impact damage per second and lose 2% of their overall max health per second while submerged, meaning it scales really well regardless of enemy level. Now this is an ability that is a bit slow to act, but if there's a large clump of enemies or maybe a strong enemy like a Nox that you want to take out of action, then this can be quite good or... Or, if you're in trouble and know you want to take some time to recover, then this is your survivability mode more than anything else. So, a couple quick tidbits that are worth to note about this ability and things that can help synergize even better with it. The first of which being, when you're in your puddly mode, you can use... Wait for it. And guess what it is? Tentacles! Yes, tentacles. 
Shocking, isn't it? To drag enemies into your puddly mess to share your waifu-loving antics with them. Additionally, you are able to move in this mode, albeit very, very slowly. Additionally, and probably the most importantly, you can use your other abilities whilst in this mode as well. The only thing I would advise is making sure you have enough energy to do so. So if you're in this puddle mode and you want to get away quickly, you can activate your two. If you want to do a bit of damage, you can activate your one or your four. Either way, your three is kind of like your survivability mode, where synergizing your other abilities can then allow you not only survivability, but able to be put out your damage as well. Or, using the Augment of Curative Undertow, you can embody that more supportive role and give your allies that love of hot waifu action. Curative Undertow allows you to cure your allies, regenerating 30% of their health every 1.5 seconds. And honestly, this can be quite nice, because if you're playing a support hydroid, you can essentially build a pure range build and activate your 4 whilst in this mode to not only deal out decent crowd control, but make sure neither none of your allies will die either. Would I personally use this? Probably not, but it's nice as an option should you wish to play a supportive range hydroid. And finally, it's time to uh -huh, use this final ability, which is called Release the Kraken. Or at least that's kind of what I would hope it would have been called, but it's not, unfortunately. This ability is called a tentacle swarm. Yep, literal tentacle swarm. I did tell you there was a bit of a trend with this frame, and although it does release our buddy boy Kraken, what that Kraken does is what all Kraken do well, and that is to send forth a torrent of tentacles! Now, in essence, Hydroid's 4 acts a bit like his 1, where you can tap it and get a small 5 meter radius area affected by 10 tentacles, or you can hold charge it for a more expensive, but 300% more harmful and 300% wider cast radius, ending up with 20 tentacles at max. These tentacles do spawn underneath enemies that are within range. If there are not enough enemies to cover all the tentacles, then they will spawn randomly around the area, on the walls, on your butt, and anywhere that might have a surface for spent tentacles to spawn. Now, the damage these deal is not the forefront of the focus of this ability, but just to let it be known that these fun-loving tentacles do deal 300 magnetic damage on the initial emerge, and then will inflict 200 true damage over the duration, meaning it will bypass armor and shields. And really, this is kind of the crux of most Hydroid plays, as its good damage lasts a long time and affects a large area. Should you then be using the Augment Pilfering Swarm, enemies that are affected by the tentacles will then have a 100% chance to drop additional loot from their loot table, and this is something that is generally used in synergy and to complement a necros, or a general farming team. I would advise if you want to learn more about farming teams and the synergy therein, watch my farming guide that'll be in my uh, YouTube channel somewhere. And really, this augment is probably the only one that I'd say is kind of mandatory, as it's something that can aid you at all times. And it's always nice to have that extra loot that's basically the core of your uh, at the core of your cast rotation. Admittedly, when it comes to your cast rotation, the way to look at it is to base your casts on how much energy you have. If you have over 50% energy, then you always want to make sure your tentacles are up at max power where possible. And if you're, this is assuming you're using a range build as your priority, as having a max range build means your tentacles are going to be affecting the widest area possible, meaning you're going to affect as many enemies as possible. So long as your four is active and you have enough energy left over, you can then be utilizing your one for additional damage and knockdown, and your two and your three for the utility and crowd control and general survivability therein. If you're below that, you'll be utilizing your three to stay alive and be more supportive and therefore survivability whilst you're building your energy up. But realistically, the casts with Hydroid are kind of a free-flowing thing, and it's one of the reasons why we quite like Hydroid, because there's no real set way of playing him. Whether you're playing range or whether you're playing power strength focus, you can kind of play whichever way you want to go, and honestly, your abilities are going to do what they need to regardless. Even, so even when you have mine or minimal range, your four will still be useful. Even when you're going maximum range, your one, your two, and your three will still serve their purpose. Make use of your ability based on the situation you're in and find where you find they work the best in. As with everything we ever do, I implore you, use your initiative. 
innovate on what I show you. These guides are nothing more than to show you the basis so you can work from them in your own manner. Innovation of your own style is key. Taking what other people have done and copying it and mimicking it doesn't it, it doesn't really encourage the idea of learning. So, as with everything, including these builds we're about to show you, take the initiative, take the example and learn from it. This first build is specifically designed for your uh, pilfering swarm and your tentacle swarm. This is one where pilfering swarm will be the foundation allowing you to do loot duplication. Now, ideally here, you're focusing on range and duration. You don't necessarily need that much efficiency because your, your four is going to be active quite a lot anyway, therefore you don't need to cast it too frequently. But as always, take these builds and work them to your own endeavor. In terms of aura spot, it's always down to personal preference. Energy siphon can be quite nice because you are wanting to cast somewhat frequently, uh, but personal preference is up to you. This is also why you probably don't need the corrosive augment most of the time, because most of the time you're going to have corrosive projection anyway. So with this, we've got a good balance of range and duration. We have auger reach, stretch, for the range along with cunning uh, cunning drift then we have constitution narrow-minded and prime continuity or regular continuity if you don't have prime continuity for the duration now the thing to realize with this is you want to base the range on the environment you're in. If you're in a more open area, you can sacrifice a bit of duration with things like Constitution and Augur Message to put more range on there with Augur Reach and possibly even Overextended. Now, the second build is your Generalized build. This is the one that will serve a general purpose and is also the one that you'll put your other Augments into. Realistically speaking, though, the Augment choice is entirely up to you. You would probably use uh, you would probably replace the survivability augment for the aug for the uh, other augments you would use. But again, I'm going to let that be down to your personal preference. This is a much more rounded build with a slight focus more towards the power strength. Now with this, we have a bit more survivability because we're not going to be relying on our crowd control as much. So we have vitality and steel fiber. Survivability mods are always personal preference. So mix and match how you so choose. Steel fiber and vitality are just a very good new player's incentive uh, for the survivability mods. You can then use the uh, adaptation or whatever you so choose should you wish. So so with this, we then have a little bit of range from Stretch and Cunning Drift. We then have our duration from Continuity and Augur Message. Uh, this is then to counter the effects of Transient Fortitude, which is where we are getting our extra power strength from. This extra power strength will, in essence, allow us to deal that extra bit of damage from our 1 and our 4 when we do activate them. With this build, you're more so going to be relying on your self-preservation and the extra potency therein. So your damage is not going to be as widespread, but the area you do affect with your 4, your 1, and possibly even your 2 is going to be tremendously more effective than, your, than the other range builds we demonstrated. And although it may be a little bit arbitrary and a little bit unnecessary, I always like to show a very new player incentivized build. This is one that can always be achieved within the first few couple dozen hours of playing the game. This is one that you can easily get access to before you've completed the star chart or your main quest line. All of these mods we show in these new player incentivized builds can be achieved within the first completion of your star chart. And this build specifically, the only augment you'll find here that might be a little bit more convoluted to obtain is either Corrosive Projection, which is an aura mod, which you get from doing your Nightwave or Augur Reach, which is a bounty reward from Planes of Eidolon. Everything else is general rewards from the game that you'll get as you play. This is one that will serve all the purposes, help with every element of your Hydroid, so you can then build up to the specific playstyle you want to go for. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the remastered, rebuilt, and redone hentai guide. I, I mean, tentacle, I mean... Hydroid guide. Yes, sorry. My my brain has been going all sorts of places and chat in Twitch has not helped me during the recording process. They, if anything, they've done their best to distract me through this. But if you want to join our fellow Hydroid and Valky here, as well as also be part of these guides in the recording process, by all means, jump on over to the Twitch side of things as we love recording these in the process of getting you guys involved. And I'm not going to lie, if DE then decides to rework Hydroid within the next three or four months like they did with Protea when I made her guide, I'm going to cry a little bit because as it seems every time I make a guide recently, DE does something within the next week to make, make that video redundant. But either way, thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please comment down below how long you've been waiting for your Hydroid drop from Tenocon, or just what your thoughts of Hydroid are in general, and whether he does actually need a rework, because he is rather antiquated at this point. Either way, thank you for watching, and I'll see all you top hatters in the next video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Ta-ra!